In a world of constant change and innovation, trust is key, knowledge is power, and the inside track is everything. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Bruce Whitfield. Hello, welcome to Inside Track and to Kyle Durham. Now, Kyle is the head of ESG, fancy, isn't it? Environment, social governance at F&B Commercial. It's a big and important job. It's a growing trend worldwide as we see greater levels of responsibility being put on large companies around the world to stop us from overheating and killing our grandchildren. I think that's not overstating it. Kyle, welcome to Inside Track. Give me a sense of it, please. We see banks around the globe and certainly in South Africa, banks tightening up on lending when it comes to anything to do with fossil fuels. Are we seeing banks being smart enough when it comes to dictating the terms when there are new property developments, for example, in terms of the greening of buildings? Yeah, so I think it's early days, Bruce. I think, uh, you know, the development of properties uh, overall uh, from a greening perspective is, is predominantly led by other incentives. Uh, at this stage, incentives are, are very much uh, financial. So we've started seeing a lot of our property owners uh, pursuing, you know, small scale and better generation in the form of, um, you know, solar PV is, is one area. Uh, energy efficiency is another area that, that we see, you know, the, the tangible link between greening uh, of commercial property and, uh, and financial benefits. So, so look, I think financial incentives and commercial property are, are very much linked and, and we'll see, you know, yields dictating a lot of behavior, particularly in the early days, as we start seeing education in, in this market grow and, and, and various other solutions uh, become available that, that make sense. But it's too slow, isn't it? I think it is. I think definitely it's uh, a little bit on the slow side. Uh, I think we need to start becoming uh, increasingly uh, more aggressive in terms of the kind of offerings that we can put out into the market uh, to assist our customers with this transition and also you know, assist them in, in an area that, that is you know, quickly becoming uh, you know, fundamental to business operations. So it's not just simply uh, business as usual, this is part of business unusual, and we need to make sure that, that our customers are, are very much uh, equipped to, to deal with this you know, new challenge, as is funding or any other challenge uh, in this space. I mean, I go into your group, for example, into the first round group, and I look at West Bank, and they built that new flashy headquarters on the side of the road probably 15 years ago. Um, and that was revolutionary in its time with uh, you know, facing a particular way and special screens to allow airflow through the building and all of that sort of good stuff. And one got the sense that this was something that was ahead of its time. But since then, I wonder whether or not there have been too many who have followed suit in the same sort of progressive way as West Bank did all that time ago. So I think in, in property terms, uh, there's been some revolutionary properties in, in South Africa that, that we can, can look towards. I mean, the, the, the attack property um, at Mall of Africa and Waterfall is, is another you know, uh, standout. Uh, the likes of the, the PwC building uh, is another you know, quite a good standout. We own, uh, involved in, in the Cape Town CBD, um, of, of Portside, our Portside building is, is also, you know, groundbreaking from a, from a green perspective. So there's definite strides that we've made there, but I think uh, it hasn't filtered its way, to your point, uh, into the wider commercial property uh, world uh, as, as yet. Back to the point, shouldn't you be making the rules and saying, sure, we'll lend you the money. Um, this is the rate if you don't do it in a green way. This is the rate if you do it and, and you and you're determined to help save the planet. Are we, they're not those sorts of incentives that can be structured into financing deals into the future. So in time, uh, you know, those kinds of structures uh, could be looked at. I don't think, you know, we're ready from a, uh, from a market point of view uh, to deliver uh, that. I mean, for, from this point of view, it's, it, it's a lot about incentives, not necessarily pure rate incentives, but incentives from the likes of valuation benefits for green assets is, is something we're very passionate about and that we are actually, you know, bringing to the market. Uh, another area is really being able to account and understand those cash flow improvements. So, so really looking at the, you know, the, the quantitative benefits those assets deliver to their owners and incorporating that into our ability to lend further, lend at higher LTVs, uh, et cetera. Not just, uh, you know, we prefer the carrot approach rather than the stick approach at this stage. 
Uh, and uh, there's a, a quote from Elon Musk, and he was talking about renewable energy. And he was saying, you know, if you want a sustainable future, then you have to take action to make sure the future is sustainable, because the opposite of sustainable is unsustainable. And why would you want an unsustainable future? Uh, I wonder if there's a tipping point at some point in the next year, two, five or ten, at which point actually this conversation never ever has to happen again, where there is just this natural switch um, to, to greener technologies, to, to greener energy, to greener buildings as a matter of course. Yeah, so I, I tend to agree with, with Elon. I think uh, sustainability is, uh, is the future. I think that the, the, the time is, is, is now. I, I don't believe it's five or ten years away. I believe we're probably a year or two away before you know, it's becoming you know, part of uh, just everyday action. Um, that is generally, I, th I think, the trend that we're seeing, particularly as an organization, the, the focus that we've put on it. Um, and we want to really push that, um, you know, that thinking and those solutions uh, to our customers to enable the, this area for them and make it, you know, as I said, part of business usual. So how then are you evolving your responsibilities within FNB? Because there are just such enormous opportunities, growth opportunities, shape-shifting opportunities in a place like South Africa, which at the moment requires 87% coal to deliver the little bit of electricity that we do have. Yeah, so for us, it's very much end to end, uh, Bruce. You, you know, if we use something like alternative energy as an example, you know, many of our customers are, are very, very good at running their properties, but they are faced by you know, 20, maybe 30, or whatever the number of, of suppliers out there that are all claiming to, to know it all. Uh, and often it's, it's about just being able to have that introductory conversation or potentially saying to a customer, you know, you've got five quotations on the table or five different suppliers approaching you. You know, this is the, some of the things you should look at. This is the regulations that you should be aware of or the tax incentives that you should be aware of. So often these kinds of topics are not just clear cut banking solutions in terms of providing funding, but there's often a, a, a very a uh, trusted advisor type uh, aspect to it for, for our customers in, in really guiding them down this road of, of unlocking ESG within their business. How do you ensure that you're the best at it? Because I mean, the, the advisory space is huge business, of course, and uh, we see lots of consultancies willing to do the same sort of thing. If you can get it all in one place and you trust that advisor, of course, then it becomes a, a far more attractive prospect. But how are you ensuring that you are at the cutting edge and you won't be accused one day by Greta Thunberg when she turns up in her yacht up the Orange and the Vaal River and comes knocking on your door of simply going blah, 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 as she did at COP26? So, uh, Bruce, for us it, as F&B Commercial, it's, it's very much about using our ecosystem. You know, we're not uh, about to enter, in, in my view, the ESG advisory business. Um, uh, that's not a, a, an opportunity that we see. Uh, the opportunity for us is, is using the ecosystem that we, uh, we're involved in, and, and we've got numerous um, you know, businesses that are involved in this space, and really empowering them to, to have access uh, to each other. So, so that for us is a, a very key part of, of, of a platform that, we, that we're looking at developing. And then, you know, secondly, it's, it's really about potentially enabling it uh, through behavioral, uh, you know, behavioral type modification. So looking at uh, the likes of, of, of call it uh, the FNB NAV uh, type platform and, and e-bucks, you know, to, to really drive behavior uh, to, to the right place. Because the rate of change is speeding up so dramatically. It's almost like the, the rate of change within the technology industry. I was looking back at some old Time magazine covers all the way back to the early 1990s um, the other day. And just the, 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 the rising rate of environmental warning cover stories that, uh, that they have published over the last 30, 35 years or so has risen in frequency as we become more and more aware. And we started to see certain countries, for example, um, saying, you know, you need to stop the internal combustion engine, at least from a fossil fuels perspective. We'll tolerate hydrogen into the future. We want fuel cells into the future. We don't want diesel and petrol burning cars beyond 2030, 2040. And we're seeing a lot of manufacturers taking that leap and making that commitment to deliver precisely that. And that becomes that sort of the, the rolling stone effect almost. It's gathering speed and, and it's coming at us. 
Definitely. I mean, you just need to have a Netflix subscription and browse through the, the, the quantity of documentaries that cover you know, the, the wider environmental, social, and, and governance type topics. Uh, it, it really is that, that growing stone you know, catching moss uh, all the way down. Uh, you know, for us, it's, uh, it's a topic that has that you know, really uh, become you know, the forefront of, uh, of business uh, at, uh, in South Africa and, and globally. Do you think those documentaries are helpful? I find some of them so flaccid and so flimsy and so lame and so inadequate and inaccurate and so agenda driven that I've actually stopped watching them. I, I don't know if you see value in those sorts of documentaries. So I, I think, Bruce, a, a lot of them uh, do you know, drive on, on sensationalism, uh, which I think is uh, a, a, a strong, you know, kind of call it uh, business model, if you if you want to call it that, uh, but some of them I think do do you know raise awareness and make you know uh, people generally aware to to kind of the the deepening crisis uh, across you know various spheres, but uh, potentially you know maybe overstepping that mark to your point. Uh, and there's no doubt. I mean, the fact is the environment is changing. The world is heating up. It is causing climate disturbances. Those climate disturbances are having a very real world negative impact on human settlements and human beings across the globe. It is the great challenge of at least the next 10, 20, 30 years. We do, somehow we need to contain it. We do. And we, we, we need to, I think, work together um, as a country and as, a, as a, you know, as in the global sphere uh, to, to address the challenge. I think it's, you know, it, it was, it's quite well reported in, in media that it's going to take you know, tremendous effort. Uh, and, uh, you know, it really is akin to, to the, the world's, you know, kind of the, the effort that was taken in World War II, uh, if not more. So, uh, really, it is the, the, the next global challenge, and it, it is the one that uh, all, everyone's eyes are on. Thank you, Kyle Durham. Great pleasure to have you on. Uh, Kyle's new job at FNB Commercial in, uh, Bank is in charge of ESG, Environmental, Social and Governance. And of course, it's going to change shape very dramatically over the next decade or two as a critical part of how we are going to grow economies into the future.